What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Today we are diving into the lore of the ancient star gods. More specifically, we are learning about their horrific abilities of destruction. So without further ado, let's dive into this lore on the powers of a Catan. In the current 40k timeline, these ancient star gods have been sharded. They are basically echoes of their former selves, but this doesn't mean that they're weak. The power that they still weed can still decimate armies. Uh, the Necrons often call upon their powers to basically decimate enemy armies in a mere instant. So these fractured star gods can manifest energy blast. They can control the actions of feeble-minded beings, banish enemies to other dimensions, and even manipulate the flow of time. But thankfully, for those living mortals, the Catan's abilities are limited by two things. Their imagination and the fact that they have lost their memories of their former whole self. So for example, Catan had the power to absorb the life energy of its foes, but some of these shards may not remember this, and so they may not know they have this ability at their disposal. But that being said, these ancient gods are not immortal. They can be defeated. One way is to breach their Necroderma shell. Once their shell has been breached, the Catan shard's own power spills out, usually ending in an explosive pulse of blinding light. So now that we know the basics of a Catan Shard, let's dive into their powers. Writhing Worldscape. The mere presence of a Catan Shard causes the ground to crumble and quake, as the laws of reality are undone. Time's Arrow. The Catan summons forth a time-rending arrow of baleful energy. Anyone, or anything for that matter, is dragged away from this reality. Transdimensional Thunderbolt. From its palm, bolts of crackling lightning are hurled at the enemies of the Catan. Sentient Singularity Gravity warps at the aura of this powerful being, disrupting engines, teleport beams, and warp jumps. The Swarm of Spirit Dust A swirling cloud of shadows conceals the Catan. The Molder of Worlds The Catan rips chunks of the planet, hurling at its foes. Pyre Shards. The Catan summons forth burning orbs of black antimatter, which some say can burn one's very soul away. The Lord of Fire. A whirlwind of flames engulfs the Catan. All flame-based weaponry are now under the control of the Catan. These living flames often explode, sending scores of enemies to their fiery graves. The Entropic Touch. Just by placing their hand on it, a Catan can decay any material, turning it into dust in a matter of mere seconds. The Gaze of Death The Catan Shard absorbs the life energy of its victim with a mere look of its pitch black eyes. The Grand Illusion The Catan Shard toys with its enemies, creating an illusion with a simple gesture. Now these are the powers of the almighty Catan Shard, but even these abilities pale in comparison to that of a transcendent Catan. Transcendent Catans are the most dangerous of their kind. They are a combination of multiple shards fused together into a single being of destruction. They can be composed of as little as 12 shards, but the power easily surpasses that of the sum of its parts. A being of such unimaginable power can only be contained by a series of failsaves. These being the Tesseract Vault, Canoptic Sentinels, Leeches, and Scarabs, as well as the God Shackle. Now the God Shackle is a Necron relic that channels the Catan's powers and directs it to an intended enemy. Now a downside of this relic is that the more control the Catan you obtain, the higher the risk of the shackles breaking apart and the Catan turning its baleful energies upon you. Now the Tesseract Labyrinth is a cube-like artifact and it is essentially a gateway into a pocket dimension. Troublesome Catan are often caged into its folds until they are released on the unfortunate enemies of the Necrons. 
However, transcendent Catans have been known to escape from this labyrinth, and so a stronger monolithic vault was created. The Tesseract Vault is a nearly indestructible construct built for the single purpose of imprisoning a transcendent Catan. As the ancient god struggles to free itself, the vault is being destroyed. However, the canoptic leeches, scarabs, and sentinels use the Catan's very own energy to rebuild this god prison. The vault can also channel the Catan's power outwards, empowering its own Tesla Sphere weaponry. But anyway, let's get on to the powers of the transcendent Catan. The Storm of Heavenly Fire from the heavens, fire rains down on the battlefield, incinerating enemies by the hundreds. The Seismic Shockwave With a thundering stomp, the ground quakes with a mighty tremor, sending infantry and vehicles asunder. Transliminal Slide The Catan moves across the battlefield like a creeping shadow, phasing through all obstacles in its path. The Cosmic Fire Celestial Flame is unleashed, incinerating foes with fire that's hotter than many suns. The Wave of Withering With a small gesture, the Catan's target withers away, scattering its once body into the wind. The Antimatter Meteor A massive meteor composed of antimatter impacts the ground, annihilating all normal matter within its range. With a simple snap of its fingers, the transcendent Catan can cause earthquakes, which can easily crush infantry and wreck vehicles. The Transdimensional Maelstrom is a swirling vortex of otherworldly energies. It banishes all life into a reality far worse than death. And finally we have the Sky of Falling Stars. Ripping the very stars from the heavens, the transcendent Catan rains down blazing meteorites at his enemies. And with that, we've come to the conclusion of the powers of the ancient star gods. Let me know what you guys thought about this short but sweet, exhilarating powers of the Catans. This 40 facts was pretty interesting to research because Catan shards are pretty powerful and then you have the transcendent Catans which are just you know over the top OP. They're pretty unstoppable but at the same time this is only a fraction of what they used to be so just thinking of how strong they were during the war in heaven is just it's just crazy it's unfathomable. But anyway, guys, let me know what you thought about this. Uh, what are your favorite attacks of the Catan? Now, one question I have for you guys is, do you think the Catan, at their height, could take down um, a Chaos God? So, for example, if we pit Nurgle against the Void Dragon, who do you think would come out on top? Because if you go back to the lore on the Void Dragon, the Void Dragon actually went up to an Eldar god, Val, which was the god of smiths. So the conclusion wasn't really 100% clear as to who won, but we can infer that pretty much the Void Dragon came out on top. Because after his fight with Val, he still continued to erect pylons to try and shut off warp energy, and we didn't really hear much about Val. So again, guys, do you think that the... Catan could take on Chaos Gods. And that's all I've got, guys. Let me know what topics you want us to cover in the comments below. Also, it is October, so we will be putting out creepy pastas pretty soon. Also, let us know what creepy topics you want us to cover. Maybe you want more lore on the demons of Slanesh or something like that. Again, talk to us here in the comments or message us on Facebook. And that's all the time I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.